planes, trains, and automobiles. And I wound up covering 5,000 miles in that time. And I've got to tell you, I am really encouraged. Because everywhere I go, it doesn't matter if I'm out in the government-created dust bowl in the Central Valley, that now in many cases resembles the surface of the moon, or whether I'm in Silicon Valley where I was, I think it was yesterday, the day before, or whether I'm in the San Fernando Valley, there's just something in here. People are hungry. Because we need to send somebody 
to Sacramento that understands how to pick a fight. And the fight of 2014 is not about whether we're going to be ruled by the right or the left or the crossfire or the It's about whether we're going to stand up for the right or the wrong. And you know, when the government has more control over your private property than you do, that's wrong. When the government has more control over your business, and yet they haven't put any capital in. Because they don't understand capital with an A. They only understand the power that comes from their capital with an O. But when they can control your outcome and your destiny, that's unreal. When the government can put a gun to your head and confiscate more and more of your earnings and then waste them on things like the high-speed rail. <laughs> I got a simple plan for the high-speed rail. I think we should finish it. <laughs> Off. <laughs> you know what? As governor, I will control five of the nine seats on that board, and I will send people there with a simple plan. And that plan is to take $500 of the $10 billion and print some really nice bumper stickers that say High Speed Rail, slap them on every Southwest airliner in the state of California and declare <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> and then I think we ought to build the infrastructure we really need. I think we ought to end the government created dust bowl yes. by building a high speed water.
but when it comes to keeping our word to those who are on the front lines defending our freedom, who are putting their lives on the line, we pray to break our word. Under a Tim Donnelly administration, that will end. Because there are some things we need to spend money on. And, and, and when we send people into war, we are responsible for that when they come home. I think we need a sound energy policy in the state. I think we ought to frack our way to prosperity and drill our way to prosperity. <laughs> and important for my enemies. You know, if you look at what they did in North Dakota when they tapped the Bakken shell, they don't have to have their government come in and mandate a minimum wage of $10 an hour, or $15 an hour, because McDonald's is paying 20 bucks an hour plus a signing bonus. And that's all due to the free markets. That's due to free enterprise. And when you unleash the power of free enterprise, you get economic growth, and that lifts all boats. Yep. And that will lift the standard of living for everyone. You know, we haven't had any economic growth in the Almost every single person in the state of California, if you are not a government employee or someone who came to this country illegally, you're worse off. Except for a handful of people who live in Silicon Valley and a couple of other places in the state. But 80% of the state's free. We have over 2 million people still out there. So the number one job is to get the government out of the way yep. so that we can unleash that energy, yep. the free markets, and bring prosperity back to You know, I met uh, Governor Rick Perry the other day at the Republican Governors Association. I went up to him and I said, you know what, Governor Perry? I intend to become the next governor of the state of California so you can spend more time with your family. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be much more difficult to get into our state and steal our businesses. <laughs> <laughs> then he laughed. And then he, you know what he said? To his credit as a statesman, he said, this country needs a strong California. You know what? We need more leaders like that. We need people that understand this is not about one person. This is not about one state. This is about the number of people. Or whether we're going to let a far distant capital control our lives better than we control them ourselves. You know, I think we all know what we need to do. We need to roll up our sleeves. And we need to spread the word. And I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I have heard people say in the Republican Party that Democrats are the enemy. Democrats are not. Tyranny is the enemy of freedom. You can clap. <laughs> Democrats are our friends. They're our neighbors. They're people we work with and go to church with. Yes. Democrats, most importantly, Americans. And you know what? I believe that we can unite a divided majority that is California on American values. Hard work, personal responsibility, and above all, freedom. Because most people that I've talked to across this great state want a government that will control itself instead of trying to control us. Want a government that will actually keep violent predators off the streets rather than try to save us from ourselves and make it impossible to buy a gun to defend our own lives. To get a hold of one of my little cards out in the foyer if you like what you've heard because we need your help. We can't do this alone. If you can help financially, thank you. But this is going to take a guerrilla grassroots army, the likes of which we have not seen since the year of my birth when a young man named Ronald Reagan became governor in his very first race ever in 1966. I want to thank you for being here today. I want to say, in 2014,
we can win. Yes, we can. We can have a victory in California that spreads across this country, a brush fire of freedom. God bless you and God speak.